the other bits of internal woodwork that that's common to most boats, all boats really, are some knees. Now these are old seat knees, but the quarter knees, the breast hook, any lodging knees, all used to be the same, and they again were grown pieces of oak or ash, but with the grain of the timber following the shape that was required for strength. Now really, this piece of timber we had earlier would have been ideal for a small knee if uh, it hadn't been chopped off as waste, because the, the grain in areas of this are certainly curving round and we could actually have got that knee out of that piece if we needed to replace that and that would have suited us perfectly but getting hold of the right pieces of oak with the right grain is a, a real headache and really the best we can do now is to make up our knees. So this is two straight grain pieces of oak with a halving joint that's glued together with epoxy resin adhesive. Now there's no question that that's going to stay there really. That's going to be as strong as one of those, it just takes a little bit more work to make together, to put together. But you don't have to spend hours traipsing around trying to find grown oak bends. So that's how these are made now. And obviously they get fitted into the boat and they will get cut, cut to shape to fit the planking on the side of the boat. And the gunnel. Then they get cut to shape. Like that. Cut out, cleaned up and fastened in place. And it's the same really. This is the transom knee out of a small sailing dinghy. This goes, sits on the, on the top of the hog and the transom's up here. And this again is two straight grain pieces of oak that are halved together with a halving joint and glued with epoxy. And as long as the oak is seasoned there shouldn't be any problem with that. If oak is wet it does move quite a bit when it's drying so you have to make sure that what you're using is fairly dry oak when you go gluing it together like that because it can distort and start opening up the joints. The other, the other bits of timber that uh, we need to mention are the ribs. Now these get put into the boat after the planking and they get steamed in. They have to be steamed so they become pliable and they can be bent to the shapes required to sit in the boat. Um, To get green oak you really need to find your local sawmill or certainly someone nearby who's sawing oak now and again. Um, there are one or two companies who supply green oak cut to the sizes you require. So you can always get it mail order. They wrap it up in cling film when they send it so that it doesn't dry out en route. Um, but the sort of the the trouble I've had in the past is I've been to the sawmill and bought 
six or eight planks of oak, all cut from the one tree. They look lovely. I brought them back, cut them all up into rib sized pieces of timber, steamed them and three quarters of them broke because there was a fault in the tree that wasn't visible and I really threw my money away. And that was a, a lesson that stuck with me really. Because what I'd like to do what I like to do now is to go to the local sawmill and actually just pick through his pile of oak planks that he's cut up and select the nice clean straight grain pieces obviously but also then you get a selection of planks from different trees so if, if you do end up with a couple of planks from this tree and a couple of planks from another tree if there is a fault hopefully you're only going to have a couple of planks that are wasted but you you tend to end up using the same people for the same sorts of timber um, the local sawmills here supplies me with green oak and uh, locally grown larch and Douglas fir which is used for floorboards and um, framing and, and other uses. I don't use locally grown Douglas fir for masts, I prefer to use imported Douglas fir and for that there are various suppliers all over the country but it it pays to if you're boat building it pays to get your timber from someone who's familiar with boats because they then can help you but also they don't waste your time by sending you timber that's unsuitable really there's nothing worse than ordering a pile of timber remotely it turns up and then you spend the whole evening depressed at home because half of what you ordered you aren't going to be able to use for the job you ordered it for. So selecting your timber is pretty important and if you can go to the supplier or the sawmill and, and pick it out yourself at least then you've only got yourself to blame. <laughs>